This video will be animating our zombie and adding an effect when our zombie is attacked by a player. So let's get started. So to get started, we're going to go to our web browser and we're going to go to open game art. Click on the first link here and we're going to be searching for blood splats. And right here, we're going to click on this first link. The link is going to be in the description. And here we're going to have seven different blood splats which are going to be displayed every time our zombie is defeated by our player. So just go ahead and then load them. And now that we have them installed, we're going to go back to scratch and we're going to import them. So we're going to choose a sprite and upload the sprite. We're just going to upload one of them to start and we'll upload the rest as costumes. So go to the costume part and go to upload costume and then just upload the rest of the costumes. And now we're going to select a few that actually look good once they come out of a zombie. So we're going to skip one, two, three. We're going to remove this one and remove this one. So we're going to remain with these five. So now let's go to the code and rename this to blood splat. We're going to go to when I start as clone, which is found in controls. So we're going to be creating clones of the blood splats. So we're going to say when I start as a clone, then we want the blood splat to choose a random costume. From these five costumes, we wanted to choose a random one. So we're going to go to looks and we're going to switch costume and then to operators and then pick a random one from one to five since you only have five costumes. And then once we switch our costume, then we want it to show. And we're going to hide it when the flag is clicked. And then once we show the clone, what we're going to do is have it go to our zombie and we're going to do that with two variables. We're going to use two variables and we're going to use it called dead zombie x that's one and then we're going to create another one called dead zombie y so now we have variables for the two positions where our blood splat is going to need to go so let's just go ahead and hide them and then we're going to have our blood splat go to this position so we're going to select go and then select the variable dead zombie x and dead zombie y and then next, once we do that, we're going to have it point towards our player so that it points towards the place it's been attacked from. So right here, point towards player. And then after that, we're going to wait a certain amount of seconds. We're going to make it random. So we're going to choose 10 to 20 seconds. And once that time has elapsed, then we delete the clone. So we go to control and delete this clone. So this is the script we're going to use to control what happens once a blood splat is spawned. So let's go to our zombie. And we do have a glitch with our zombie, which you may have noticed while playing the game. If you click on the flag and wait for some ammo to spawn, and now let's wait for a zombie to spawn. So we can take out our AR and shoot one and then two. And then if we take out our knife and hit this zombie, it then becomes invincible because its health doesn't equal to zero. It ends up equaling a negative number. No matter how much you shoot the zombie, it will be alive forever. So in order to fix that, what we need to do is because we're changing by negative 1.5 and then change it by negative one and then negative one again, it will end up equaling negative 0.5, which is not zero. And the game doesn't look at it as you need to change a kill and delete this clone. So we're going to go to operators and select uh, or block. And then we're going to say if zombies health equals to zero or if our zombies health right here, zombies health in the variables is less than zero, then we can also change kills by one if our zombies health is less than zero. So that will happen if we end up using a combination of the knife and the gun at the same time. So that should fix that problem. And now the next thing we're going to need to do with our zombie is we're going to need it to spawn these blood splats. So we're going to go to control and create a clone of 
a blood splat once the zombie dies. So now let's go ahead and test the game and see how our blood splats actually act in the game. Here's a zombie and we see that the blood splat is kind of acting weird. So let's stop that and what we need to do is first we need to go back to our zombie and we're going to need to actually set our dead zombie x and y so dead zombie x and set our dead zombie y we set this both to the current position of the zombie before it dies and then the next thing we want to do is go to our blood splat and have them all facing a right position so we want the top of this blood splat to face left and the bottom to face right and we do this to all of them now we have all of them tilted so now this should ensure that all of our blood works properly let's wait for some ammo to show up okay now let's see there we go that's one type of blood showing let's see this one a different type of blood showing but we're walking under it so let's stop and set our blood to the back of the layer so go to looks and go to the back layer at the beginning of the game so that all bloods splats are at the back of the game so another glitch which was a problem was in our health pickup and that once we collect three health packs it never actually spawned anymore so we go to our variables and you want to change health pack limit by negative one and we do that once we're touched by a player so if touching player then we change health pack limit by negative one so that should fix our other bug which we did have in our game so next what we're going to do is animate our zombie and our player a lot more so let's first go to our zombie right now it's not having any animation whatsoever so we're going to go to choose a costume and we're going to upload some costumes we're going to go to the tds zombie top down shooter zombie and we're going to go to first we're going to go to move we're going to go to the first move zero move and we're going to go all the way to our 16th move Okay, there we go. Now we have all of them in our game. And we're going to delete the idle one as our zombie is never going to be idle. And the next thing we want to upload is the attack for our zombie, which is here, this, the first one up till the eighth one. So that should create a, an attack animation and a move animation. So now we have to do the code for it. So now that we're in the zombie, what we're going to do is we're going to create the animation for both the attack animation and the walk animation. So what we're going to do is go to looks and we see that our move animation is the first costume and it goes until our 17th costume. So zero is considered one and 17, 16 is considered 17. So what we're going to do is switch our costume and we're going to start at skeleton move zero. And we're going to do all this in a brand new when I start as clone. So we're just going to duplicate this one. And we're going to remove the first two blocks. And we're going to keep the forever loop. And not any of this point towards or move one step. It's handled by the script. And we're going to use a switch costume to skeleton move zero. So we're going to duplicate that again. And we're going to start with the first zero. And then we're going to switch it by a positive one every time our zombie moves. So we're going to go to operators and select the plus operator. Go to looks and then the costume number. And we're going to add it by one. But we're going to make sure that we don't surpass costume number 17 which is a move and then after that we end up going into the attack animation which is now what we want to do while we're moving so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the control and then go to if statement and then go to operators and say 
costume number equals to 18 then what we're going to do is switch costume right back to move zero so that we start over the cycle and then we're going to have a wait seconds and we're going to wait 0 0.2 seconds let's see how that works now let's see our zombie animated oh zombie zombie now we see our zombies animated but it is pretty slow the animation is slow so let's change it to 0 0.1 see how that looks still a bit slow 0 0.05 and let's see how that looks there we go that's a nice looking zombie so now these zombies are walking towards us and kind of freeze once they get too close so now let's stop this and what we're now going to do is we're going to create the attack animation so here's our move animation but now what you want is an attack animation so we're going to go to the when i start as clone and we're going to do the animation again in a different when i start as clone as we're going to be working with numbers we're going to be waiting with wait seconds which isn't the good idea usually to use in the same script two different wait seconds if you're trying to do two different things so here we're trying to animate and here we're trying to damage the player so we're going to say if we touch our player we're going to let's see how many costumes we have we have from 17 18 to 26 so we have eight different attack animations so we're going to go to our code and we're going to repeat this eight times this instruction eight times so we're going to go to looks and we're going to switch costume so we start at attack zero. Oh, so that must mean we have nine different attacks not eight so we're going to repeat this nine times duplicate this and we start off by switching to attack zero and then we're going to go to operators and the addition operator again and then go to looks and then use the costume number and we're going to add it by one so what will end up happening is we're going to switch our costume and then repeat this process eight times so that we end up with nine costume switches while attacking so what we're going to do is have a weight variable we're going to say wait i feel 0 0.05 should also work if it worked with walking so duplicate that and then use the weight 0 0.5 whilst repeating so now let's see how this turned out there we go there we go there is a bit of a delay between how long it takes for the zombie to do damage so what we're going to do is instead say 0 0.5 one and then 0 0.1 and see how that helps with the attack of our zombie if it makes it any better okay there we go that looks a bit better but our zombie is doing a walk in between and it is slightly again delayed what we want to do is instead of waiting one second we're going to wait 0 0.9 seconds before we then actually decrease the health because that's how long this process takes right here the animation to get to the actual attack okay next what we need to do is get rid of that walk which we just had by the end of each attack so what we're going to do is create an if statement and we're going to say that if our costume is ever equal to one so we're going to go to operators equal sign and then go to looks and then say if our costume number ever equals to one while we're touching the player then what we're going to do is switch costume back to i'll say attack zero 
right here. So another thing to do is just make sure that we're always facing our player. So what you need to do is go to point towards our player and we go to this one where we're actually doing damage to the player and we're going to touch it at the beginning. As we touch him, then we want to point towards him and make sure that we're touching. Now what we want to do is go to our if statements and we're only going to switch to this skeleton attack zero if our costume number is less than so we go to looks and say if our costume number is less than 18 as 18 is the first number that is part of the attack motion so that's it for this video make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next episode we'll be animating our player a lot more than he is currently animated we're going to add knife animations and animation to every single gun that he has so make sure to stay tuned for that thank you for watching